Hey there. For those of you who are watching the replay, you know the drill. We're waiting for people to come on in here and um, waiting for the audience to build. And so we are here again today for the midweek wellness manna today. Hey, overflow, increased manifestation. I like that. That is really cool. I like that. Um, prophesy to yourself. Absolutely. And then every time somebody says that overflow, increased manifestation, they're prophesying back to you and to themselves. I like a double-edged word. That's really cool. I like that. So, greetings, everyone. As you're coming in, you hate um, Allison. As you're coming in, you can share me. Um share me um go ahead and give me some hearts i'm sure it's gonna bless you so you can go ahead and and do that because i already know it's going to um i'm already uh know it's gonna bless you hey miss diane how are you okay so we've really really been working hard on the feminine flow and i really got the feminine flow on a whim um really not wanting to hey tanika really not wanting to go in that direction but it's the direction that we're going and I've really been trying to keep the um, environment uh, sterile, so to speak. Um, no pun intended. Um, because I really want for all of the teaching and trainings and everything that we're doing through Jules Wellness with Meal Prep Monday, um, Thursday, Therapy Thursday, everything to be able to cross over, to put a hook in the nose of those who are in the marketplace for the, um, for the kingdom of God. So... Um, I really want to do that, but however it is what it is, and when you are what you are, it just will always just bleed through anyway. So um, last week we started with an overview of dealing with the feminine, uh, the feminine flow, and the feminine flow is so very important because you know of the fact when we're women, we all will have to deal with the feminine flow at one place or another. I. Uh, begin my period and my cycle when I was nine years old. I started having periods at nine. Hey, Leela, I started having um, periods when I was nine, and they were very traumatic periods, um, so much to the point where I would miss days of school, so much to the point um, that I would have to go to the physician. Hey there. Um, hey, uh, hey um, boss lady, so much to the point, you know, physicians visit, um, ER visits, um, hospital stays, um, because my periods were so traumatic and they were so bad. Um, and I really didn't realize until really just briefly studying to get on with you all today, really where those traumatic periods were stemming from and why they were so traumatic. As I went on in my life and I bled really heavy from, from the first time that I started having periods. So from age nine until I stopped having them, I bled like a stuck pig, as the country folk would say, that I always bled really, really badly. And so um, it was very, it was very important um, to me to really share. I was able to get back, go back and watch it. And this info is very informative. Thanks for your willingness to educate us in these areas. Absolutely, Prophetess Allison. Um, I really think that female health is very important, especially in the kingdom of God. When you're dealing with where, um, thank you, uh, uh, Leela, for sharing, especially when you're dealing with, with now the divorce rate in the kingdom of God is actually over 50% now. And now from my understanding, statistic-wise, that it is actually going, is actually in like the 70% range now. And I believe some of it is because we're not talking about the female flow and we're not addressing um, human sexuality as a whole and we're not addressing the sexuality of women. Um, I believe I'm an African American. I'm a black chick. I've been a black girl all my life that I know of. And so one thing I can't agree with, um, I believe it was um, Malcolm X said that the um, black woman is the most mistreated, maltreated um, situation of being in the earth. And I really do um, agree with that and I believe that because of that I believe that that's why we have so many issues in our body while we have triple negative cancers and we're more prone to triple negative cancers we're more prone to die from breast cancer as black women and so I'm not saying that other um, races don't have their health disparities because they do um, you know uh, I think Ashokani Jews and um, a different type of um, uh, um, 
you know, bloodlines have different um, have different ailments that attack that you know their race. But like I said, all I know is to be a black chick. You know, so I like I try to address things across the board. Hey, Cynthia, thank you for joining us. But um, I, I just believe that that is why uh, the, the divorce rate is so high in the church because we're really not dealing with things of sexuality and we're really just not dealing with the woman's body. Um, I believe that as mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers that we really didn't do a good job of conveying sexuality to our daughters. And I believe because of that that we are paying the price for that culturally. And I believe that because of that, we are paying the price for that culturally. We're paying the price, price for it familially. And we're paying, hey, Apostle Joseph, how are you? And we're paying the price for it even in the church. Because I've, I'm a firm believer that what the church does not address, what the church refuses to acknowledge, or what the church refuses to solutionize, eventually the manifestations will come in the earth realm as the price tag that we've paid for not solutionizing things that God put in our domain to solutionize and that's what I feel I feel like there are things within a family and actually I'm in the final um, working on the book cover finalizing a book cover I'm a phenomenal artist uh, my book closing doors um, strategies to unlocking generational proclivities and bloodline iniquities is on its way and I will actually be getting the pre-orders and everything's it's soon but that's a lot of the things that I'm dealing with in this book is really for us to go back and how to be delivered as a generation and how to be delivered as a bloodline and how to be delivered as a family because oftentimes one of us is going to the church and one of us is going to the church and getting delivered and getting healed and maybe even getting whole but we're not causing for that whole paradigm to hit a whole household or an entire household and so we're not causing we're not causing for that to happen. We're just we're just hitting pockets of those certain things. And so I believe that this is where we started with our young girls is really causing for them to embrace femininity. Um, I was speaking to um, Sergeant Tanika, who was also my armor bearer. And one of the things with that that she was telling me recently is that now they're thinking about causing for women or young women to have to actually go into the draft. And so this is one of the things. Jaden, this is one of the things that um, we have to look at as it relates to the feminine power and these feminine movements and what feminine movements have gotten us into and what feminine power has gotten us into with having to actually leave. Hey, hey Shantiria, thank you so much for sharing everybody and what the feminine power and the feminine movements have gotten us into, whether we're black women, Asian women, white women, whatever we are, has have really positioned us in some places where we really were not designed to be and have positioned us in some places that have bought undue stress and duress upon the feminine body. Um, I truly believe the reason why women have cancers and women have certain ailments is because we deal with certain pressures and we deal with certain issues that we're not designed to deal with. Hey, Kib, like my husband just came in and, and we were talking about some financial things sometimes. And, you know, a lot of times he'll just tell me, this is all I need from you. I just need X, Y, and Z from you. And, hey, um, Mama Yvette, um, I just need X, Y, and Z from you. I just need that from you. That's all that um, we are not equal and there are things women should not be doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Miss Kim. Haven't seen, haven't been able to see you in a while. Um. And there are things that my husband will tell me, I just need X amount of dollars from you a month. Or he'll say, I just need you to do X, Y, and Z. Um, because it is the reality that there are just some things that we are not designed to handle. There are just, hey, Kenya, there are just some things that pressures that we should not have to incorporate. And I just believe that that's why a lot of times we're stressed. I believe that's why a lot of times we have certain things, um, deterioration of certain parts of our body, because men are designed to handle those stressors. So even with our young girls now potentially having to go into a draft, I think that that's horrendous. I think that it's horrendous that my daughter or one of my daughters may have to pay the price for something that I didn't petition for, for something that I that I don't really even agree with that was started in the 70s with this feminine power and wanting to be equal to man.
Because when we want to be equal to man in certain areas, then we have to pay the price for it as women. Um, do I think that we are the, the do I think that he's the God, even God said that we were the weaker vessel. But we have to understand that um, that we have capacity to make their heads turn. They're the head and we the neck. And the head can't turn without the neck. And we are the neck. So we have the ability to make their heads turn in the direction in which they need to go. So don't minimize yourself as a woman. So I want for these next few weeks, I think we're going to really stick with this feminine power um, because I've had so many inboxes and I've been praying for each and every one of you that have inboxed me some of you, your thyroid. Um, I had a, I had a few young women that we were talking about vaginal dryness on last week. I couldn't believe it. I had a few young women that even inboxed me about that, who I believe are under their thirties. But see, nobody is dealing with vaginal dryness. No, you, you know, grandmama didn't tell you when you got to, got to be in your forties that you was gonna have vaginal dryness. Grandma didn't tell they ain't, they ain't tell nobody you was gonna have vaginal dryness. And your husbands, your husbands, uh, dad and and granddaddy didn't tell them that okay when she get a certain age, then there's certain things. Things that's just gonna start happening with with their body, and it's just certain things start sagging, and certain things start doing different things. Yes, ma'am. Perimenopause, premenopause, menopause, and postmenopausal. Absolutely. So. These are the conversations that we need to be having. So when we're having our women's ministry studies, hey, me to me, when we're having our women's ministry studies, these sometimes are the things that we need to be addressing um, That because the body is changing. Even in premarital counseling, this needs to be addressed. Even when, you, when we're counseling people as pastors and counselors and therapists sometimes in regards to what's going on in the marriage, sometimes we just need to just cut to just come on and just come through and take the chaser out and let's find out, okay, what's going on with you? You got vaginal dryness what's going on with you you can't keep an erection long enough what what's the problem what is the problem and so for those of y'all who don't know me never heard me y'all know i shoot straight from the hip i'm just raw i'm straight up hennessy crown royal whatever you want to call it no chaser here we are here we go. So I believe those are the things that we need to deal with. Um, what I want for us to do as women, I want for us to reclaim our power, especially as it is concerning the menstrual cycle. Um, like I told you before, I believe last week, I started having hot flashes when I was 33. Um, so, but I still, because of my blood levels, hey, Ladisha, hey, good to see you, um, because of my blood levels, but I still was not perimenopausal. I wasn't perimenopausal, but I was having them hot flashes. Um, so I got a hysterectomy, I think, when I was 39 because of excessive uterine bleeding. And so I was on both ends of the spectrum. I had excessive uterine bleeding, um, going to work, walking around with a, uh, with a with an iron bag infusion pole, calling patients back myself. Here it was. I was a patient, but I was bringing patients back, getting iron infused into my body because my hemoglobin level was a 5, or 6, or a 7. A 7 was the best it could do on its own without having some type of transfusion. Um, and even with the transfusion, usually the best it would get was an eight and a nine, and then it'll plummet back down. So I want for us to learn how to embrace our femininity, and I want for us to be able to embrace what was stolen from us. Many, um, one young lady, she inboxed me, I think a couple of them said, well, do you think that I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing with the periods or the fibroids because of the fact of, um, do you think it's more spiritual? And I believe that's a two-sided. Um, I believe that's a two-sided coin there because I believe that there are there there is a spiritual manifestation of the things that happen to us um, when we become when we're molested. If I'm molested. Um, I may, my uterine health may be horrible, horrible. If I was molested, I may, I may have some type of ovarian disorder, whether it's ovarian cancer, whether it's polycystic ovary syndrome, um, even though polycystic ovary syndrome and disease is usually relegated to women who are morbidly obese, but not always because I've known a couple of young women who were fine as wine and were dealing with PCOS. So yes, womb trauma, exactly. And so here it is, is that we have women who um, have facilitated or have endured some type of physical ailment, whether it was physically or abusive, but that abuse has to have somewhere to house itself. So sometimes it houses itself in the breast, it houses itself in the uterus, it houses itself in the pancreas, the thyroid, usually uh, most of the time it houses itself in the gland, adrenal glands, pituitary glands, it houses itself there. And so we have to be mindful so I, of those things. So I want for us to reclaim our femininity, and I want for us to reclaim our womanhood. And I think with reclaiming our femininity and our womanhood, I think that's where our I think that's where our health becomes better. Um, 
I want to read some things to you. I take notes. So if you see me looking away, that's because I'm take. I, I always take notes, even though this stuff I know probably backwards and forwards. I always want to um, make sure that I give you the best of me and I give you the best of the knowledge that I have. But I want to ask some of you. At, like I had to look at for myself who have had hor horrible periods since I was nine. And one of the things about when you have periods at such an early age, that also makes you a precursor as well to certain cancers and certain ailments because now you are being predisposed to estrogen levels, high estrogen levels at a very early age because of the fo fo a follicular stimulating hormone and the luteal phases and those different things that are happening in the body. So, but I want to ask you, hey, Sonia, how are you? But I want to ask you, how might it have been different for you if on your first menstrual day that your mother had given you a bouquet of flowers and taken you to lunch, and then the two of you had gone to meet your father at a jeweler, and either you had your ears pierced, or maybe he gave you a purity ring, or um, maybe you went to dinner, or maybe you did something, hey there, you the queen, or maybe you did something that was significant that surrounded your period. Maybe you did something significant and that was empowering um, surrounding you getting your first period. Maybe that was something that you did um, that your mother brought you into. My conversation with my mother in regards to my first period was you can't be playing with them little boys anymore. And that was the conversation. It, hands down, bottom line, wasn't nothing else. So that was my introduction to womanhood. That was my introduction to these painful periods. That was that. And so I really believe because of my introduction to that, I really believe that that's why my, my, my cycles were really so horrible because I really didn't have any in introduction to that. And so, you know, I want for us to reclaim our wisdom um, to our to our cycles, and I want for us to think differently about them in a brand new way. And if you are in a place where you're no, like me, had a hysterectomy, no longer having cycles, this is still some information that's here for you, whether you want to pass it on to your daughter and your granddaughters, or you want to pass it on in a women's group um, to teach other women how to help their children, their daughters to embrace femininity. Um, that's that is what this is about. One of the things, hey, hey, thank you, Shantiri, that's right. So one of the things that um, I want for us to understand is that the menstrual cycle is the most basic earthly cycle that we have. Women by nature are cyclic. Y'all going to hate me for this, but if we have a one female president, I don't know what we would do. I'm going to tell you why. Because women are cyclic. And even when we no longer have periods or if I don't have a uterus because I still have my ovaries, um, didn't get a convo from mom or sisters, had to work through it on my own, ask the school nurse a lot of questions. Wow, that's crazy. And so that, exactly, so at this time, a lot of us had to rely on, I think we had the health talk, and, and they separated the boys, and they put the boys in one class, and then they put the girls in another class, and that was the health talk, and that's all we got about sex, and that's all we got about periods. And that's all we got about these little boys was going to be hot in heaven trying to breathe down our neck and all this here kind of stuff. Yes, no introduction. Tiffany, listen, that was the threat I got. I guess the death threat I got. And, it, and listen, Tiff, and the threat still didn't work because I still was a hot mess. So, um... Yes, a female president would be would would be a lot because of our emotions. Naturally, we can't suppress that. E exactly. So I I'm not really in luau of a female president president, and I believe that's why God made. I know that's why God made man the head because we are cyclic. We are cycling. Me too, I believe, because our mothers were not educated, that they did not know how to educate us. Absolutely, Kim Capis, because when I look, Kim, at, and, and my oldest son had to reflect this to me. When I was getting all bent out of shape last year about our men being killed on every turn and every platform and racism seemed to be building, rearing his head, it took my 18-year-old son to say, Mama, he said segregation just happened just a few years ago. I'm 45. Segregation happened in what? 19. Desegregation happened in what? 1968. 1969. I was born in 1971. So desegregation had not happened, but just a few years prior to that. So when you even look at that trajectory and look prior to that, like how far back was slavery? How far back was were we able to begin to vote? So when we really look in time and really look at just the trajectory um, of, of a race of people and we look at... Um, 
Exactly, Kim. And look at that trajectory. Then now we can really get shed some light on that. And I, I agree. Um, the, 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 and, the, and the apostle said the same thing. I, I, could, I, I have to give you what I have and that I ain't got. So moving forward, this is what we have to do even in the church. Um, and we have to stop that cycle of what our mothers did and their mothers did and help our daughters and be open and honest with them. None of the children in the White House respect her. It's a man's world at that level, and that's how they want to keep it. Absolutely. And so I believe that um, we do have to break the cycle. And so that's why I, one of my hashtags was cycle, was to break the cycle that's in the church of lack of information about femininity, um, break, the, um, break the cycle of... Um, lack of information even within our bloodlines and our generations as it relates to our femininity you know sometimes i believe i truthfully believe and i want y'all feedback on this because this is really interesting i haven't been feeling well you know really for the last couple of days and really been pushing myself but hey babe you're on so my husband is on but i want y'all feedback on this because i really feel like one of the one of the issues with possibly with lesbianism is the fact that no one has potentially really highlighted the value of femininity. And so oftentimes I'm finding with lesbian with lesbian women that they despise what femininity represents. And they despise that femininity represents we need to learn communication with our daughters. That's good, Pastor T. And we dis and and they despise what femininity represents and they de they despise what femininity brings to the table. And so I believe that is one of the core root problems of um, really exposing that devil of, 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 of lesbianism is that. It's because somewhere along the line, that, 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 the, that purpose of femininity and that power of femininity has been disconnected from them. And sometimes it has been disconnected from them even in the womb. And so I want y'all communication. And I'm getting ready to throw something out here that may be really far-fetched for you, for you all. But I have believed this for years. My mom was a deliverance, is a deliverance guru. I have believed this from years. I believe that I believe that some of the problem, even when our children are born, that they come with same sex spirits attached to them because when you when you conceived the fight for equality caused that. Yes, yes, it did. The fight for equality caused that. So one of the things when women are pregnant and you know how it is, you got three boys and you tired of these boys and you want a girl. But hey, uh, Prophet is Nord. But then when you get pregnant. You say, oh, I hope this is a girl. And if it's a girl, I'm going to do this. And you are not ready to name, you know, you done already named the baby. And um, this is Austin teaching Latanya Smith because last week we had me interceding regarding men bringing honor back to women and not looking at the vagina as a sex object, reclaiming back the vagina. Oh, now you know I'm finna tag that. They might not like me in the Christian community. I might get, ooh, I might put that on the t-shirt. They ain't going to like me with for that one, but it's going to be okay. That's good, Miss Kim. I like that. Um, teaching women to bring honor back to women and not looking at us as, as a vagina, but that is very good. And so, so what happens in the womb, when you begin to label that child as the opposite sex, that child already comes into the world as a place of rejection because you have to remember everything that has a womb has ears and the womb has ears. Even the thing that you, even the thing that you think has the capacity to shift your DNA. Um, my son was telling me when he was studying for his psychology class last week, he said, Mom, do you know that when even a thought that you think, even a conversation that you have internally, that it actually registers in the brain as, as something that, has, that you've actually said? The thoughts that you think, the internal conversation that you have, when you do a scan or testing, it actually highlights as if it actually came through the ear gate, literally. Yes. Yes. And everything that has womb has everything that has a womb has ears. And everything that we're dealing with in life has a womb. Everything has wombs. In even anything that you think that is an inanimate object, it has a womb. And so um, that's one of the things that I know is far fetched. Y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to talk. When I ask my friends if they're gay, how did they become gay? They all were. They were born like that, and none of them never exactly because you're dealing with a set of people 
Yes, already come with identity issues because of words spoken over them in the womb. A absolutely, absolutely. And they were, and their response is, is that none of them were, but they were born gay and they never were sexually abused. And so I know we don't like the term in the church, born gay, but you, was a bo you were born a liar. You were born a cheater. You were born in sin. You were born in iniquity. You weren't born saved. So my husband is the psychology guy. He has a um, major in psychology, so he's a psychologist. So um, it becomes a concrete cognition in the, in the womb. So the brain records it, Ms. Kim says, and that's why we have to be careful of the thoughts that we think. Compartmentalize those thoughts and put them in a proper perspective. Exactly. So now what happens when we have these thoughts and those frequencies are, are being translated to an unborn child, that child now does not have the emotional capacity or the mental capacity to be able to to deal with the rejection and the abandonment that you're forcing upon that child because either A, you don't want the child, or B, you want that child to be another gender under other than what you want it to be. Or maybe it wasn't about gender. Maybe you you went to the abortion clinic. Maybe you was looking through the pages of abortion. Maybe you were discussing abortion with somebody and or or your mom was discussing abortion with somebody with you and and, and are are these different dynamics and 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 you you know, and, and it played, it played on their identity, as my husband said, the, the, con the concrete recognition even in the womb. I don't know how we got all the way over here in the left field about this, but, but this is very important. So with the conversations that need to be had in the church, for so for those of you who are deliverance workers, now you got a whole nother angle. Now you got a whole nother sword, another angle of the sword to come from when you're dealing with deliverance. Because see, now sometimes you got to go back to the womb. You got to go back to before the womb and you got to go back to you got to go back to the birth. Because what happens when a child is born? What happens? Because we're still dealing with sexuality. We're still dealing with women's sexuality. So what happens when a child is born and you wanted a boy and you say, oh, Lord, child, here go another little girl. Child, I showed, oh, child, I ain't want no little girl. I'm just sick of doing hair. And I'm just sick of this. And I'm just sick of that. So that's that baby's first experience coming into the world. The first conversation that that baby's having. That baby's not being welcomed. That baby's not being recognized and, uh, and acknowledged. So immediately... Immediately, the, the cognition of that baby says, mm, I don't want this. Another legal action on the courts of heaven that is fought when God already knew who you were in the, in the womb. Yes, yes. So then, um, and so now, this rejection does not always come in the manifestation of being lesbian or, 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 or homosexual or Try, bye, bye, curious, or whatever the case may be. It don't always come in that form. But, however, this is one of the, one of the manifestations, one of the strong manifestations that I really believe that's, that, that's happening. You know, in the womb, you telling the boy he a girl, and you telling the girl he a boy, and they come out and they respond to what you told them. Because you have to realize that the parental injunction that the parental injunction that you have over a child's life, over a being's life is very important. So for those of you who who may have feel like you've encountered this yourself, I don't care how old you are, you have to, hey, Sandria, you have to sever that parental injunction that is lingering over your life based over the words that your parents spoke over you in the womb or at birth, or over your life period. You actually can, the child comes out confused, you actually can sever the parental injunction that's over that child. Um, if you are doing deliverance, you actually can serve an apostolic injunction, just like a server process server comes to your house to serve you papers from the courthouse to let you know you've been served, well, you could serve the gates of hell. It does cause an eternal conflict regarding identity crisis. That's why some deliverers can't have it because in an alternative lifestyle, people aren't able to discern the root of the cause. Absolutely. And so just like a process server comes to your house to say you've been served from the court on the behalf of whatever attorney and that attorney. on, And you got to look at the layers of when you get served. The sheriff comes because initially an entity put in a complaint to the court. But that entity probably didn't come directly to the court. That entity went to their attorney to say, hey, I need to do this. And then the attorney put it into the court system. And then the courts and then the court system hired somebody to come out and serve you. 
So when you look at all the different layers that it takes just for that injunction to happen, just for that severance or that serving to happen, so it is in the realm of the spirit. And so we have to be able to look at all these different layers. That's why sometimes, you know, the people are coming through deliverance and, and, and we trying to figure out, man, what in the world going on? They don't want to be free for real and, and they don't want to be this and they want to be that. Let me tell you something. I watched a movie called <clears throat> Blackburn or Blackbird or something the other day. Let me tell you something. Until I watched this movie just the other day, I really did not realize how 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 tormented lesbian and gay men can be. When they really realize, young men in the church singing in the choir, when they really realize that this is not the will of God. But I don't know how to get out of this. Well, my Lord, Kim, what is you? Woo, Kim, what you say? Come, woo, Lord. Yes, you have to go to war. And so you serve that you that you serve that. So now if you are somebody who is a prophet or you're an apostle or God has ordained you as a de deliverance minister, then now what you can do is you can serve an apostolic injunction or you can serve a prophetic injunction over that legality of the um over that legality that the enemy has introduced through a parent or introduced through a word curse or introduced through whatever open door you have the ability to serve a divine injunction by way of the apostolic or the prophetic to be able to counteract and to veto and to renounce and to shut down that entryway and that door and you can be able to and you and you're able to do that um when it comes into that place of deliverance and healing um so, and you can't, and you're not going to be able to deliver people out of your frustration. That's why a lot of people not getting delivered from same sex, um, homosexuality and lesbianism. Cause we got people that's trying to, trying to deliver people out of their frustration. It always been a fight is to me putting her on dainty girlish clothes and him trying to put on her. Exactly. So now you had a, you had parental injunctions. You had two injunctions going against each other in, in the house. Uh, or wherever the case may be with that. Um, and so I believe some of the, I believe um, part of our, our, our really bad menstrual cycles, part of the PMS, I believe part of the excessive uterine bleeding, the dysfunction of uterine bleeding, I believe even some of the infertilities, I believe some of these things oftentimes do come from the lack of the, um, the lack of the father. I asked you in the beginning, how would it have been? If your mother would have given you a bouquet of flowers, if your mother would have took you, taken you out to lunch, or if she would have made your bed up and said, come on, baby, let's, let's lay down and, and let me get you some rest. Let me get you a cup of tea. Let me, let me help you. Let me, let me show you what to do. My mama didn't show me what to do every month when I was sick in that bed and I was, and only, only, I, you know, we, we women and men here, my husband is on, but if you a man, you could benefit from this because you need to know how to help your wife. You need to know what to do. You need to know how to help your daughters. You need to know how to help the women in the church if you are a pastor and so you know my only relief was sitting on the toilet so I would just sit on the toilet for hours at a time but I can't do that if I had to go to school so then I missed school because I was sick so this is the these are the things that we are harboring we begin to harbor our uterus so these so so as women we hate our uterus and our uterus responds back to that hate our ovaries hate we hate our ovaries our female re reproduction and we and 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 our bodies will respond back to that because as kim said our mothers did not know to do that because they weren't treated well we we, we weren't treated well we was treated like garbage we was treated like secondhand uh step redheaded step child uh, secondhand whatever we were treated poorly so we didn't know we we didn't know so, so we passed down this generation of bitterness in regards to our femininity. We passed down a, a generation of bitterness in regards to what makes us woman and what makes us female and, fe and feminine. My husband said, "I'm glad you're a girl. I'm glad you're fat." I said, "Oh, I'm glad I am too, because we wouldn't have been married if I wasn't one." So, um, so we have to embrace that. And so, this is what I love as we're closing out, because I don't know what time, but you know, I get on with y'all and I lose track of time. But this is what I love. We got a few minutes. This is what I love when I begin to study about the cycle. The menstrual cycle governs the flow, not only of the fluids of the discharge from your body, but your cycle also governs information and creativity. 
So for those of you who are highly function, high functioning women like me, your business, your business chicks, your bosses and your own right and respectives, I would challenge you to really look at your cycle or if you used to have a cycle to look at how that cycle rolled to really start planning when to do certain things in the month. Because and I re- and 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 I when I reflected on this, this is correct. We receive and process information differently at different times in our cycles. We receive and process information differently at different times in our cycles. The menstrual cycle itself mirrors how consciousness becomes matter and how thought creates reality. So here it is. God, you know, a God is amazing because Anything that you want to understand, any any spiritual principle that you want to understand, uh, um, it, you God literally has given us physical. Um, um, Tanya Garland, man, left at forty four. That's a little early. That's a little early for um for a period to leave. Little little early. But then in your family, did did you all go through menopause early? So some things are generational when it comes to that. Did you go through menopause early? So, um, you know, and it's kind of early, especially if you still want to, wanted to have children. But those that, that usually when periods are that early, usually it's generational. Usually my mama had her period in 40s and, and, you know, that type of stuff or whatever has happened. But usually not so. Hey, Danielle. Hey, pretty lady. How are you? Yes, none for four months. And usually, Tanya, what happens with the periods is that you, I don't know if you had hot flashes, started having hot flashes or not, um, but usually what happens is they'll get irregular um, or that they'll become irregular or they will, um, you'll get one and don't get one for two months or you'll get it for two months and don't get it for one and you start getting it every other. It usually gives you a sign that it's getting ready to happen, that it's getting ready to go down. Things will start um, signaling you that that process is getting ready to happen. But if your mom did and her mom did, then that's probably something that's generational for you. Um, but it is early. So um, you really want to start... Um, you know, potentially looking at some type of subli- supplements and stuff, especially for bone health and stuff like that, for osteoporosis and different things like that, since you have gone through menopause so early. So you really want to start looking at that as well. Um, the menstrual cycle itself mirrors how consciousness becomes matter and how thoughts create reality. Case in point, I'm going to break that down for you. During the time between the period and ovulation, that's the time that the egg grows and develop. But on an expanded level, that is also the time that ideas and creativity happens. This first half of the cycle is a very good time to initiate new projects. Jaden, please. Ovulation occurs mid-cycle, and what, and that's when you start dealing with follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormones. Um, that's when you start dealing. Hey, Tanya, how are you? Tanya, what's the ta- 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 Tanya Jameson? Hey, newlywed, almost newlywed. So that's when you start dealing with that. So during that period of time, that is where you become more creative. Ooh, Angela, you in your 50s and you still going? Well, God bless you. God bless America. Yes, Lord Jesus. Um, There's a rise. So during that period of time is when you are more creative during a certain period of time. Ovulation represents mental and emotional creativity at its peak. But once you ovulate, Leading up to another cycle, this is the time that you become evaluative. This is your reflective time. This is where you're looking back over the last month, the last period of time, and you're looking like, okay, what what happened? What didn't happen? What needs to happen in the next 30 days? What do I need to accomplish? How do I need to set up for that? Um, this is also the time that you do more routine tasks, and you do not require much input from others or expansive thought on your part so that's what so that's when 
And, and, and you know what? And this was very important to me where you're going through a period of time where I don't need everybody input. I don't need to hear from everybody. I ain't got to be touchy feely. I don't need to be around everybody. Exactly. And that's the best time to write. And I think this is important as, as Kim was saying, our mothers didn't know these things. As Ladisha was even saying, we have to break the cycle and teach our daughters. So I think this is the place where now we're, we're, we're even training our daughters to come in, baby, and be like, okay, baby, we're looking at the calendar. Okay, your period getting ready to come on. So, you know, um, we're, and I need to, I'm talking, but I need to do this with my own baby. I got one left. Your period getting ready to come on. So come on, let's get, let's get prepared for this. Let's get prepared for this rather than, oh, Lord, here come messed up sheets, messed up towels, messed up panties, messed up clothes, messed up this mess. We just bleed out everywhere. Oh, God. I'm so. No, if we just learn to teach them to embrace that and learn to teach them that even if they have an accident in their clothes, it's okay. Take an extra pair of panties to school. Take a Ziploc bag, extra pair of panties, and an extra pair of pants on our granddaughters, our, our great-granddaughters. Whatever. Let me tell you something. I used to go to work. And Ted, uh, you ask my husband, he on here right now. He might have got a hundred. I used to mess those sheets up every month when I tell you. So it it does produce a level of shame and it produces a level of embarrassment because that is what our culture has caused with, you know, um, in regards to that. Something that is very natural. Um, yes, ma'am, I have. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have um, the different teas, the different foods and herbs. Yes, ma'am, I have. Um, so I, maybe I'll probably get it. I ain't planning on going that direction, but I guess maybe I would do that. Um, and so we all know that when women live together or work together, we start, we start cycling on the same period of time. Um, but this is what I want us to do. I want for us to learn how to heal through our cycles. And once we begin to appreciate our menstrual cycles as part of our inner guidance system, we begin to heal both hormonally and emotionally. Um, Ladicia just said it. She said we get our best ideas premenstrually. They may not, we may not act on them until later, but during the premenstrual phase, we need time to be alone. Time to rest and time away for our daily routines and lives. So what begins to happen is, is that we don't make that time because everybody in our life dictates they want what they want now. They want dinner now. They <laughs> Shantiria, you. you could be the ghostwriter for that. How about I call you and I just put it, I just talk to you and you write it out for me. We're going to do it that way. Have you ever thought about writing a book, a handbook, an outline for young ladies that don't have a mother, father, grandparents to teach them? That might work. I, I, I like that idea. Cool. Um, but that's the period of time where we should say so. We are always in demand. Yes, good. that's a good way to put it, Kim. Kim. It's like um, kind of like women and mother. Women are like. The um we have um uh, what do we got here? We don't have Bright House. We got Direct TV, and Direct TV. I don't know what Bright House got. Um, but Direct TV has in demand, and anything that you miss, you could go to the you could put a two. I think in front of the number the channel that it came on, and you could put a two in front of it. You could go to the in demand channel, and you could just watch it when you want to. So our family treats us like this for the most part. Most most moving pieces in our life treats us like we are like we are in demand. All they got to do is just push a button and we run around like chickens with cut off heads. Literally. That's what we do. And so for me, it's kind of calming down somewhat because I don't have four children in my house anymore. I just have one. My grandmother raised me, but were three childs. My parents were in the streets, had to learn on my own. Absolutely. So what, so what I want, all access pass. Exactly. So for those of us who are ministers and preachers, my, I got inbox ministry going. And between my inbox, between ministry and wellness, it's on fire. So I got that going. You know, I got people texting me. I got people calling me. I got people emailing me. And if it get real crazy, that's good, Kim. That's good, Kim. I'm I'm put that on on the shirt now. I'm, I'm finna get these ideas, Kim. Come on through now. That's a book in demand or a workshop. I'm writing that down now. So um, so but we have to um. I wrote that one down. It's good. So we have to look at how this is really affect, affecting our sexuality. How this is, how this is, don't nobody want to lay, listen, 
One of the reasons why our sexuality, I believe why vaginal dryness ha happens, I believe why libido is decreased in women, um, is because don't nobody want to run around like a chicken with a cut off head all day, wash dishes, cook, do all the things that we do, and then lay down and have sex. It, we just don't want to do that. And so sometimes that may be the issue with lubrication, with the excitement level, with 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 that um, part. I had a hysterectomy in my late twenties, went through the change. Now my mid forties, ovulating and changing again. Over the years, my ovaries grew back. One has been removed since. Wow. Well, I had a hysterectomy too. I had a what's called a partial hysterectomy, but I kept my ovaries because I want them. I didn't want to take any um, pharmaceuticals for estrogen replacement, so I went ahead and I kept my ovaries. Ran the risk of whether or not I got a cyst, I got ovarian cancer, blah blah blah, and all of that kind of stuff. But I kept my ovaries, so I really have. Even though I still get hot, but I was getting hot flashes when I had a uterus and ovaries. So for me, it ain't really been a big deal. Just get some black cohosh and move on, call it a day. But anyway. Yeah, but you had in the late twenties, and so that is my concern with our women. If Tiffany, Tiff, if I knew then what I knew now about health and wellness, I wouldn't have had a hysterectomy. Because for those of you who have excessive uterine bleeding, there's something that you can do called castor oil plaques, and I actually use this on a couple of my clients. They're called castor oil cast, castor oil packs. Go figure. The thing that our great great grandparents and our grandmothers said would fix everything. Well. The castor oil packs, you use them, you create these packs. Um, the only thing, you just really can't be bleeding profusely, but it does help with um, with the profuse uh, 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 bleeding during the cycles with the castor oil plaques. So I have had some people that have really received some great results from that. So, um, so those are the things with the cycle. So I want for us to embrace our cycle as something that, um, as a cleansing Yes, 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 yes. Now, I haven't personally rep rec rec recommended that one, Kid the Don Quiet. I haven't personally recommended that one. Um, and a lot of things, too, y'all, just like we go find these Michael Kors bags and we go find this these red bottom shoes and we go find all this stuff that we want. Sometimes some of the herbs, like some herbs that I threw out last week, some of that stuff we ain't never heard, like Don Quiet, uh, uh, Castor Oil Pack, some, some of this stuff we ain't never heard of in our life. But I, I live in Central Florida area at the flea market. It's a lady. She go to Africa like like she goes back to Africa or the island or somewhere like twice a year, two or three times a year. What she does, she brings back the natural raw shea butter still in the big old nut. She crack the nut when she get here and open it up. When you literally go to her little shop, she's literally scooping the shea butter out of the nut. When you get there, um, she has port por por diarco, which is a um, which is a herb, which is a tea that helps with regulation of blood sugar and helps with regulation of um, blood sugar and blood pressure. So some of these treatments you gonna have to go out of your way to find. Some of these things you gonna have to go out of your way to 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 do. And I ain't knocking the red bottom shoes. I got pairs of sh red bottom shoes. I'm not knocking. I'm not. I'm not knocking into that. But sometimes we we do a full all out search for all this other stuff. But we don't do a full out search. For the stuff that we need. So sometimes, you know, we're in the flea market, I go get my shea butter from there. Um, when I have certain clients, matter of fact, I'm glad I said it because I got a client that I need to go get some portiaco tea for and I forgot. So, um, so, um, we, we have to, we have to do that. And I think one of the things is because in the, in the body of Christ, we have made so many things be demonic. We have taken people word that. Doing this or doing that or not doing this and doing that and drinking this and drinking that and doing this move and doing that move and doing this move and doing that move. We made it all demonic. We made it all demonic. And so um, I'm, as I close out, I want to read some things to you. I really hope this bless y'all. If this bless y'all, give me some thumbs up. Y'all go ahead and share it again, please, if you will. Um, but I want to give you some things. Anatomy of a woman's wisdom. And... Each part of the woman's body has encoded wisdom. Each part of the woman's body has encoded wisdom. The menstrual cycle, I was told that parsley is cooked as a, as a tea, eight, eight pregnant women. Hey, Carlos, Pastor Carlos Sims, what you, you, what you doing on here? You, see, that's what I'm talking about. The man of God is on here. Uh, is that, uh, that prophetess Sims? 
Uh, folks have to do their research. Most individuals put their health in the hands of the physician and not take responsibility. Hey, Sandria, thank you so much. To God be the glory. You know what, Kim? And we put the health, put our health in the hands of physicians and don't take responsibility. But this is another thing that y'all getting ready to say. I'm getting ready to say that y'all ain't going to like either. We put our health in the hands of unqualified people that wear collars and clergy that don't have no training, don't have no certifications, don't have no, no letters behind their name. And I'm not saying... The letters behind the name is everything. I ain't saying I, that ain't what I'm saying, but I believe y'all get what I'm saying. It's just like a scope of practice. It's, I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 23, 24 years now. And because I have functioned as a pastor for a few years, and, I have, and I'm still an ordained elder in the Lord's house. So I'm an elder, I'm an ordained elder, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an ordained, uh, I'm an installed pastor, and I'm an ordained prophet. So there are certain things by law as a pastor that I can do. I can counsel people. But I love something that I saw, I think it was Alexis Master posted about a month ago with Apostle Eckhart. She was getting married, and I'm going somewhere with this. She was getting married, she went to Apostle Eckhart. Now she a member of his church, she went to him, she said, Apostle, we, you know, me and my, my fiancé and I, we need marital counseling, pre-marital counseling. Apostle Eckhart, this man has traveled to like 70-something nations, has traveled all over this world. Y'all see him doing the reset and the, and the reset and all this activate stuff. This man of God told the member of his church, he said, baby, he said, you're going to have to get somebody else to do that. He said, because that ain't my lane. I don't do premarital counseling. I'm not a counselor. That's not what I do. And I believe that that's why the divorce rate in the church is so high. It's because we got people. Yes, he your pastor. Yes, he smell like sheep. Yes, he can preach the roof off. Yes, he can preach your socks off. But when it comes to that marriage counseling, baby, he ain't got it. But we got to have enough wisdom to tell folk. We ain't got it. Either I ain't got it because my own marriage jack jacked up and I ain't got the oil on my life to help you slip and slide through this loophole of the enemy and get out of the enemy's hand concerning you because I'm trying to get out myself and I'm trying to get some oil on my life for my own marriage or that's just not my lane. And sometimes we just got to just be honest with ourselves as pastors and leaders in regards to where we are at. Because you cannot allow as a clergy person of the clergy and of the cloth, you can't practice outside of your scope of influence. Now, if you got a good marriage and a great marriage and you, you got it on the pop and then that gives you, that give you some leverage. If you've been married for some years, that give you some leverage. If you got some, some, some a LMHC behind your name, a LMHT behind your name, and you, uh, you got psychology degree on the wall like my husband somewhere, then, then you need to do that. But if not, you need to tell these, tell these people go get some help. Or how about you as a pastor, put, go get you, go get you a, a, a concierge therapist and say, hey, can I put you on my payroll per diem? So when I have people that need premarital counseling and marriage counseling and certain issues that I cannot handle in the scope of my collar, in the scope of my collar, then I'm going to call you. And how about as the church, we going to pay for it? How about that? Because the health of the church is predicated on the health of the families that are in the church. Oh, y'all don't want to hear. Y'all ain't talking right. Y'all, y'all, come on, come on through. Y'all know, y'all, listen. My spiritual father always taught me. He said, if the little church jacked up, then the big church going to be jacked up all day long. So as Kim said, as Ladicia said earlier, we have to be able or we're going to begin to have to bring entities into the church to train our leadership how to deal with certain issues in people's life because it's very doable. But train the people. It's, it's certain certifications. You know what? And I'm going to put this up. My husband um, got it. It's certain certifications that you can actually go get. In, in, in um, counseling, is some certain things that you can do um, that you can get to help people with addictions. You can get to help people with abuse. And I, and I know sometimes I seem like I'm off topic, but this stuff is what's 
killing us in the church. We're not talking about sexuality. We're not talking about sexual health. We're not talking about addictions in the church. We're not talking about physical abuse in the church. Why? Because the pastor is beating his wife and the pastor is abusing his wife. That 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 part. We're talking about the female flow. We're talking about fe female liberation. We're talking about reclaiming our femininity. We're talking about, as Kim said, being on this wall and praying for the men of God to come through and begin to honor the women of God the way that they should be honoring the women of God. Let me tell you something. I, I have never, I've only seen two couples in my life that tear the frame out of marriage. And one couple ain't even really been married that long. Well, they've they been married some years. Let me tell you something. My spiritual parents, Drs. Charles and Judith Anderson, let me tell you something. Honey, they put the stank on marriage. Let me tell you something. And let me tell you something. I, one of them on here right now. Let me tell you something. Apostle Tracy and Alice Stallworth, let me tell you something, baby. They put the stank on marriage. If you want to know how to do marriage and you want to know how to do that thing right, go see Ellison and Tracy Stallworth. Honey, the baby, they put the stank on it. Do you hear me? Honey, I be around them sometimes. I be so sick, child. I be so nauseated. I be like, child, y'all act like y'all done just got married. Like... Like, they just got married yesterday. Honey, please, let me tell you something. But I ain't mad at them, because let me tell you something. Baby, y'all better learn how to learn from other women how to treat your man. Let me tell you something. You better learn. Honey, I, I sit and I watch her observe. I ain't girly girl. She real girly girl. Honey, I observe Miss Allison. Yes, I do, honey. And everything I observe and I and I watch her do, honey, I bring her right on back to my house, honey. And I learn how to do it. Babe, bad, boo, boo, kitty. So we talking about, yeah, Kim, we going to do that and you going to come speak, Kim. We going to talk about being in, the, in demand because I just got a revelation, Kim, with where that need to go. Listen. Yes, yes, Prophetess Allison put the stank on it. Yes, ma'am, honey, Pastor Tracy Starworth, and my spiritual parents, Dr. Charles and Judith Anderson. Let me tell you something. I know that it ain't always great. I'm sure that, you know, they got they whatever they got going on. But listen, they do that thing. I'm finna get on off this line, but I want to help y'all real quick. Because I just love being with y'all. Y'all make, make my heart sing. I'm like happy feet. Y'all make my heart sing and my feet move. But the, the, the wisdom of the menstrual cycle is it is cyclic intuitive wisdom and emotional recycling and processing when this wisdom in the menstrual cycle is trying to be cut off it is the physical manifestation is lack of periods heavy periods irregular periods and pms so when so if if i have a menstrual cycle and, and and my menstrual cycle is being frustrated and I end up going into premature menopause or it's being frustrated because of lack of periods or heavy periods or irregular periods or PMS in the realm of the spirit. That means that now I am being t attacked emotionally and my ability to create in the realm of the spirit is being attacked as well. Oh, y'all better hear me today. The uterus is the creative center in relationship to self. And the dysfunction is bondage to the emotions of others and unable to birth the most creative self. So when you have an issue in the uterus, because the uterus is the center, it's the center of your body. So it is the center of your relationship to yourself. So, 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 so when you, so when you, um, I got to read all these comments. Have you heard of Yoni Egg, Latanya? No, I have not. Well, I'm going to write that down, Kim. I have not. I'm going to write that one down. Um, so when you have an issue in the uterus, it is bondage to the emotions of others and unable to birth your most creative self. And the physical manifestation of that is fibroids. The ovaries, the encoded wisdom in the ovaries is it creative drives in the outer world, the assertiveness in the out of world. And the dysfunction is addiction to external authority or approval. You got an addiction to people. Lord have mercy. Addiction to people. The physical manifestation is ovulation abnormalities, ovarian cysts, and ovarian cancers. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, my son was just talking to me about a manifestation for somebody that he knows. Um, breast. Your breast, the wisdom in your breast is the expression of partnership. Why? Because it, and it is also an expression of transfer of wisdom and knowledge. Why? Because it is where your children nurse or where some of our children has, have nursed. And that was, that's the importance of actually nursing. That's why I actually ended up trying to nurse my, my last two children was because when you nurse your baby, it actually minimizes all of this stuff with these different ailments that we have because when you releasing when the baby is suckling your breast, they're getting your immunity. But there's also there's also enzymes that they're releasing back into your body through your breast to help you be well. And I'm going to move on. Breast, emotional expression and partnership. Energy, dis the dysfunction that you're having is the inability to fully feel, express, and resolve emotions. Inability to participate in balanced partnerships and in balance between intimacy with self, time alone, and with others. So then you end up, the physical manifestation is breast cyst pain, breast cancer. Because usually um, the studies that I have seen, even, even in clinical trials on a professional clinical level, when they did the interview about women's emotional past and their physical past, any type of abuse, the majority, over 50%, I think it's about 70% of women who had breast cancer had experienced some type of um, traumatic abuse in their lifetime, physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, and it lodged in their breasts. Lord Jesus. Hey, Prophet Kofi. Um, okay, body or organ, pregnancy, capacity to conceive an idea or life with another, hold it, nurture it, and allow it to be born. This is where you all some pray some ways that you can pray. The energy to create and maintain new life, the inability to trust the process of giving birth. Hanging on to grief and loss. This is why it's so important for me, especially in the church, for us to learn how to allow people to go through their grief process. Because that's what's killing a lot of people in the church. And and you wouldn't have to keep having, you wouldn't have to keep, you wouldn't have to keep casting demons out of people if you learn how to let people go through the grieving process. Want to keep, cause y'all think y'all dynamic, and we think we all wonderful, and we want to be. Just let people go through the grieving process. If they had a loss, let them grieve. You know, people lose babies, and they miscarry. They have stillborns. Um, they lose a family member. They lose a child. They lose a husband. They lose whatever. They lose a dog, a bird, whatever. Oh, child, just get over it. You gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. Just get over it. Rather than letting that person, so now, they're in, now you've made them be embarrassed about the process of their grief. So now they, 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 um, they frustrated because you've not allowed for them to go through that five step process of grief. Some of you are in places of infertility in the realm of the spirit and in the natural because there's some areas of your life that you need to grieve and you have not allowed yourself to grieve. But I ain't going to get in there today because I do that on Therapy Thursday. Um... Cervix, vagina, and vulva. That means ability to create healthy boundaries. Because you remember in the word of God, the cervix, vagina, and vulva, ability to create healthy boundaries, discretion about intimacy. Remember in the word of God that, that when, a, when a man penetrated a woman as a virgin, that the blood went over his penis to signify that a, 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 legal, co a legal covenant had been made. Signifying that that was a healthy boundary that had been made. So the dysfunction that shows up in our lives is poorly defined boundaries in relationships, whether they are sexual, at work, with your co-workers, those types, they detract from well-being. Guilt about sexual pleasure. Let's get on that. Lord Jesus, we is really going over the day. Jesus, Lord have mercy. Listen, I believe that's why a lot of women have an issue in the bedroom with their husbands. Guilt about sexual pleasure because they realized that it was at a place in their life where they was hot to try or they was fast or whatever case it is. And, and, and so they, they, they bought this thing into their marriage. They bought this thing into their marriage and 
and and they and they're having a hard time breaking from that. They haven't had a hard time breaking from even when we and we need to stop talking about the stuff that somebody made us do. We need to stop talking about somebody made us have sex and somebody made us do all that and whatever whatever y'all got going on in your mind and just denial and stuff. You know that part. That's another day. But guilt about sexual pleasure, Risha. Risha, I tried to be good today, Risha, but it didn't work on it didn't work on my favor. It didn't work on our behalf. So guilty about sexual pleasure. Um, and guilt about that because we indulged in some situations when we were younger or um, we indulged in whatever. Well, well there was, we, we had some lesbian behaviors, whatever the case may be. Maybe we did, you know, do whatever we did. Um, you know, um, we did it. You know, maybe you was fast. Maybe, maybe that was the case. But we got to break that bondage of the past. Of that yoke from the past. I guarantee you. We sitting up here 45 and 46 years old. But I guarantee you there's a level of shame. That's in some of us. And some of our psyches. Yeah you might have been made the first time. But that second time. Yeah, exactly. Um, sexual relationships. Some of us are dysfunctional. In, in work environments. Because of the sexual relationships. That we had prematurely. And we dealt with that on Therapy Thursday last week. Your very first sexual encounter, especially if it was illegal, actually will cause how you how you deal with people in the church. What kind of relationships you got with them folks at the church house? What kind of relationships you got with them people on your job? It will always, you know why? Especially if something was taken from you because you know what? You don't trust nobody. You don't trust the people. That, you don't even trust the people who give you a paycheck. And they sign, and they give you that, give you a, y'all know you work for it, but you don't even trust them. Physical manifestation, vaginal infections, abnormal pap smears, um, herpes, and warts. Those different type of things. And that could also be infertility as well. Urinary tract and bladder. Capacity to feel emotions fully and discharge completely. <laughs> Listen, I researched this. is gonna, This is going to make y'all holler. I'm just going to say it how I researched it. Urinary tract and bladder where you are, where, where, where your, when you, that emotion from that is when you chronically, when you always pissed off, literally, at life in general. Stagnated flow of emotions and relationships and dependency on relationships. Chronic urinary tract infections, interstitial cystitis. Which is horrible in itself. Horrible in itself. Y'all, like I told y'all about me, my situation was when I went to have my hysterectomy, my bladder was jacked up. I was I was peeing on myself. I was urinating on myself. That wasn't sexy. Who who wanna have sex and you peeing on yourself? My son talking about not me. He's still a virgin. He ain't supposed to be having sex no way. But who wanna have sex? Um you peeing on yourself or you smell like urine because my bladder was leaking and my the neck of my bladder was rotating on itself. And when they went in, my bladder was literally wrapped in a cocoon like somebody. Don't laugh at me, Kofi. Um, that's my brother, Kofi. Uh, if you did not get this broadcast in the beginning, I'd go back. We have to be break ignorant. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So my bladder was, neck was rotated and... It was stuck to the wall of the uterus and the wall of my abdomen. So he literally had to scrape my bladder off the wall of my abdomen on the inside. He had to literally strip all of the sticky glue, out, whatever that was, all of that. He had to literally go find my bladder. And that's why I was having bladder problems. But see, don't nobody. T but see, the old women don't tell us about bladder prolapse. The old women don't tell us about uterus prolapse. And I guarantee you, some of y'all mamas and grandmamas had bladder prolapse and uterine prolapse, and ain't nobody never say nothing to you. So now, when this stuff starts happening to you, you're embarrassed, and you don't know who to go research. You don't. You don't know. I have seen. Let me tell you. I have seen young girls in their twenties having to get hysterectomies because they were sitting on their bladder or they were sitting on their uterus. And when I say sitting on it, I mean the bladder was outside of the vagina and they were sitting on it. I know you're saying mama, but I'm telling you the truth. This is what I saw with these right here, my own eyes, sitting on their bladder and sitting on their uterus. And I promise you, some of our grandparents and our grandmothers 
and great grandmothers was has dealt with this and 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 like but like Kim said, they didn't that we we just take so many things as it's just life. Oh, I'm peeing on myself. Oh, that's just life. But had I not been an OBGYN oncology nurse for ten years, I would have thought it was just life too. And when it started happening to me, I just would have went on and got me some depends and went on. I just wanna went and got me some poise or some depends and just been like, okay, well I'm getting old now, I'm getting old and this just what I just gotta do. Cause my mom ain't tell she didn't tell me about sex. I know she wasn't finna tell me about peeing on myself. Child, please. Anyway, menopause. A passage into wisdom, capacity to be open, to be constant, intuitive knowing. And when you are in a place of menopause, this is the place of receding the community. And how do you receive the community? You receive the community with your wisdom. As Kim was saying and Ladisha was saying, we receive the community with this wisdom. Get, here, here you go, Kim. Menopause. What's the dysfunction? Unfinished business from past that is unaddressed. Basically, that is unaddressed generationally and through the bloodline. Physical manifestation. Incapacitating hot flashes. Depression. Palpitations. Anxiety. Forgetfulness. Melancholia. Had all the above. So, that's my rain raid from the day. Ain't got no more. Y'all done, y'all done sucked it all out of me. Ain't got no more. I got to figure out what I'm going to say next week. Now, nah, ain't got no more to say. <laughs> but anyway, we going to carry on. You, Tiffany, wake up. I got a, Tiffany, I got a throw cloth for you. You want me to throw the throw cloth on you? I got a throw cloth for you. I go get a nurse with a hat. One of them nurses in the church with a hat on. I send her to your house with a throw cloth put on you. How about that? Anyway. <laughs> So, I really wondered why, Risha, don't do me like that. Um, I really want, hey, Overflow, thank you so much for hanging in there with me because you were the first one coming on. Yes, the book is coming. Monica, don't talk about them white stockings. Listen, not them white stockings and that whole white outfit and that. Shut up, girl. I love white. White is my favorite color. And I, if I could wear all white every day, all day, I would. But um, that's what we got. So, women, let's be liberated in our sexuality. Let's just jump off the chandeliers and jump off the dressers. How about that? Let's just do that. Um, for those of you who are married, married women only. MWO, married women only. Let's do that. Um, but for those of you, I, I pronounce healing to some of your bodies, some of your minds, your mindsets, even including my mind, even including my mindset. You know, when I give this to you all and I have to research it out on greater depth, it's healing me too. Um, I refuse to give people what I want you. Um, some of this stuff on today with certain mindsets that we've exposed and dealt with. Um, some of you have heard me say this before. Some teachings... And some ministry, some revelation is like a horse pill. You take, you can't swallow it, but you take it and you put it in your cheek. And you let it dissolve to get small enough until when you can swallow it. But the thing about buccal, I'm a nurse, the thing about buccal administration is that even when it's sitting in your cheek dissolving, it's still getting into your bloodstream. It's still getting into your body. It's still going down. So... I'm excited. Thank y'all for hanging in there today. Um, it was really great. Didn't intend for it to be this long. Didn't intend for it to go in the directions that it did, but I'm thankful. Um, y'all share this because I think this is the best one yet. So y'all share this. Um, and when we're going to be free. Um, in because we are what we are in demand. We are in demand. Our wisdom is in demand. Our knowledge is in demand. Our lives are in demand. We are highly in demand. And God needs us to be whole. He needs us to be well. He needs us to be healed. He needs us. Um, Pastor T taught me something. She said, and, and this is Pastor T who is in her late 40s, I believe. She said, I've gone, Prophet Satanya, I've gone through healing. I've gone through deliverance. She said, but I realized I was never made whole. Gone through healing, gone through deliverance, but I wasn't never made whole. 
So we want the threefold cord. Healing, deliverance, and wholeness. That's what I'm after. That's what I'm after in you. So, hey, we're going to be on for Therapy Thursday on tomorrow night. Who knows what's going to come out of my mouth? I don't know, Risha. Yeah, Pastor T is 50. So for those of you who feel like healing, you're never going to get healed, who you just feel like too late, I'm just stuck like this. Listen, Pastor T, 50 years old. Pastor T, 50 years old, she getting her health on board. She done started working out. It's painful. It's a painful process for her right now. But she doing it. And if she could do it at 50, some of y'all, a lot of y'all younger than 50, you could do it. She's realizing at 50, there's some emotional structures that she has to build. And there's some emotional structures that she has to tear down. And this is what women's wisdom is about. Building emotional and mental structures that support us for a lifetime. But tearing down and destroying the emotional sp structures that have been created in our lives. Oftentimes by people. By people. People who long gone, dead, flew on, died on, rolled on, ain't thinking about you no more. Child, please, just got done work out. Yeah, and I got to go change and go do mine. Whether I feel good or not, that's what I got to go do. Because I ain't do one yesterday because I was running around. I was in demand <laughs> on yesterday. So, regardless of how I feel today, I got to work out today. And I got to do a double workout. I got to go do this video from yesterday. And then I got to get on one live today at 7. And then I got to go get these, get on this um this elliptical out here because it's raining. So, I got to go get these steps in some kind of way. So I love y'all uh, with the love of God and may grace, peace, restoration be unto you. 8 p.m. Ladicia. 8 p.m. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. For the love, I love you too, Leela. And yes, Pastor T. The next generation. I know you ain't gonna hurt me because I turned the screen off. I turned the video.